Alright guys, welcome back to another M Creator Lore video. So today what we're going to be working on is basically temperature for the um, kiln block. And I wanted to add basically something like um, a value into the config file for each recipe. So recipes have basically the ability to control how hot the... Uh, furnace needs to get to in order to smelt the items so that's at least the general idea that I want to implement um, Carrie was suggested it uh, not too long ago so huge shout out to uh, her for basically making the suggestion for the temperature um, today I basically worked on that uh, there was a whole bunch of stuff I had to figure out <laughs> I actually messed up the workspace a couple times um, from the system, but I knew that I needed to add a couple values um, for the temperature in the uh, config file. So it took me a little while to find where I stored it, but um, basically we're using file manager to handle the recipes and such. So basically what I'm doing here is I had to look up the temperature for um, what it would take to make quick lime and it's roughly around um i think it's about 825 or something to like 900 or something like that so i went like from 825 to 950 or something and basically that gave it a, enough room for um basically when it the item is going to be crafted it's going to go up to that maximum temperature and then it's going to basically make sure that the item is crafted so that's basically the idea for the temperature part i basically added support for file manager uh for recipes through that and then it's just a matter of making sure that the script can actually work with. Now, adding a simple value to a config file is a lot easier than actually adding support for it. Um, I I know this pretty often because when I go to add something into a feature, it's like, okay, now I need to do this, I need to do that. And there's always multiple steps to actually going ahead and actually implementing the feature, even though that using file manager is pretty easy. Like for example, I needed to make sure that I imported the actual values into the block uh, using file manager. So I knew that was one of the first steps that I needed to do. And I needed to get both values for the minimum and maximum values for the temperature itself. Uh, the other thing that I needed was basically to copy these, just make sure that the values are exactly the same. Um, often I have run into issues where I have one character less, or I forget an S, or if I go like metal plates, then if it, I type metal plate, then it's not going to be the same thing. So it's uh, really important to make sure the names and stuff are always uh, similar. So the next thing that I was trying to do was basically try to figure out uh, what I needed for um, resetting the recipe because I obviously I needed to reset the recipe after it basically gets smelt. This is going to be automating the process compared to taking the item out of the slot itself. So I needed to figure out where I needed to put this particular part of the script and um, it, it took a while to kind of figure out but I knew that I needed something to do with the recipe part right down here. So I basically stuck that part in right there. Uh, I don't think it changed too much. Uh, there was, like I said, a few things that I ran into issues with, but um, I was able to kind of fix them. All right, so I basically was starting to move over to add support for a few different variables for the recipes. Like for example, we need to know if the temperature is at the right temperature in order to um, actually craft up the items. So I needed to make sure that the variables would get passed over properly. And one of the issues that I had later on discovered was I was still running it from the UI um, actual script for when it was update tick. So I had to move the entire thing over to a block and convert all the entity variables to something that would work with block uh, tick updates because uh, block tick updates don't support the ent entity, um, uh, what do you call it, the um, 
dependency. So I had to basically work on something like that. Now, this was just like really early on. I was still trying to figure out what I needed to get the script and everything working for all these things. Like, for example, I needed to make sure that the uh, timer for the temperature would go down if the block was off. And I needed to make sure that if it's above the temperature, if it's on, then I needed to lower the temperature. If it's um, lower than the temperature, then I need to increase it. So there was some script there that needed to be added. Um, again, these were just like things that I was testing. I, I hadn't even gone in game just yet. So I had to play around with a lot of the settings and try to get everything to work. Like this was generally the idea, but there's, uh, there's tons of things that were still wrong with it. Like for example, it would automatically remove the items, um, like instantly and stuff like that. That was down to some coordinate based issues that I had set up. Uh, there was um, the fact that it was only going to run in the tick updates uh, for the inventory. So there was that. Um, there was a whole bunch of other factors that I needed to consider as well. So it wasn't exactly just like a cut and dry, like I'm going to implement this kind of thing. It was like, uh, how did I set it up and how can I adapt it to work with a new system? So that's basically what I've been working on. I'm just trying to um, get all the variables set up. And I think I was at this point where I could do the test or just needed to disable a few things. Like I needed to uh, yeah, I needed to disable the slot action so it wasn't, uh, uh, removes the item if it was destroyed or, like, taken out. So this is probably the first attempt that I had in-game. So I turned off the, uh, kiln and then I went ahead and basically <laughs> placed all these blocks and this is where the first issue kind of happened. I turned it on and it would automatically like remove the block and like completely wipe the inventory. So that was down to a bunch of issues. Like I ended up going ahead and reworking all this. I ended up moving it over to the block, like I said. So now it's running on the block side. Uh, there was still some issues, but I did manage to like get them sorted out uh, over time. So there was one one procedure for the actual temperature part and then there's one for the actual inventory part and then overall I was able to kind of get a general uh, temperature value so this is basically what the temperature is at that very moment if I type it again you can see it's increasing by the point something I think I set it to 0.5 or something like that or I did 0.1 I think I might have done 0.1 for the initial test and then I moved it up to 0.5 because it was taking a pretty long time to get up to the temperatures needed for a kiln. So um, yeah, so basically I didn't know at this point if it would work or not. So I just basically, basically removed the block and I placed it back down and got all my blocks back, unfortunately. But um, then I went ahead and tweaked, tweaked the code in order to get the script to go to that 0.5 increasement. Uh, this will make it like five times faster than what I had it on. So it should go a lot more smoothly up to the temperature it needs within a reasonable amount of time. Um, basically that's what I worked on in this particular part was just making sure the, the timer was set up, you know, efficiently. And then testing in game, I was just uh, using the data command to test to see what the temperature was. And you can kind of see that it's at 386 or whatever. So eventually uh, over time, what will happen is the temperature will get up to the value that it needs to. And then it will basically convert into the cobble or uh, quick lime, which can be used for farming later on. So keep. I just basically kept doing this, uh, just waiting for the the thing to update, and it shouldn't take too long. Um, I did crop out some of the time uh, in order to save, you know, the video from being too long. But it's not too much longer in general. So as you can see, it crafts everything up. We can take it out, and we can turn it off, and then it should turn 
the temperature down over time. So looking at the config file, uh, basically we can update this file and then we can see the two values that I put in here. Uh, 825 and uh, 950 would be the range for the quicklime. I did do a little bit of research, not a huge amount, for looking up what the quicklime needed, but it said around 825, so I, it can go any higher, any point higher than that. It's just um, uh, 825 is the minimum temperature. So those are all the tags that are in the recipe at the moment. We have the output item, the display item, the layers that it requires for the blocks, uh, the amount, and now the temperature. So there's those basic, little, basic few things that we needed. Um, but outside of that, yeah, it's, it, it's in working condition. I'm really happy with the textures and how everything looks. Uh, we'll probably end up moving on to something next. Um, I'm not sure about next week. There might be uh, some unfortunate events um, currently getting some outlets and stuff updated not my own choice but the uh, management of the building decided hey you get two days notice so uh, that we're coming in and going to be updating these things so yeah it's unfortunate but um, I will be hopefully have the lore video for next week if not then I'll have it the week after anyhow if you are new to my channel don't forget to subscribe comment down below rate the video and I will see you guys next time thanks for watching peace out Thank <laughs> you.